some criticism tonight for the Republican-led committees in the Senate. Are the GOP-led panels doing enough in the face of House Democrats' impeachment push? Well, let's bring in a member of the Judiciary Committee, Republican Senator from North Carolina, Tom Tillis. Good to have you with us, Senator. Great to be back. Okay, so Senator Lindsey Graham chairs that committee. What are you all doing in the face of people and the president yesterday saying he wants the GOP to be tougher? Well, I think there are a couple of things that Lindsay, I think, as late as uh, tonight came up with. First and foremost, we're in the personnel business, and we have confirmed a historic number of circuit court judges and district court judges. We've made great progress. We need to get the president reelected so that we can literally transform the Article Three court. On the subject of impeachment, the first thing that I would like to see and what Lindsay talked about tonight is have the House follow the regular order for impeachment, exactly the way they did it with Clinton, exactly the way they did it with Nixon. Have the minority, have the president's counsel present in public forums to actually go through all of the allegations that they're making against the president. I think if they do that, and they do it the way they've done it in the past, the Republicans are going to have more opportunities in the House, and the Democrats are going to have more problems trying to build a real case for impeachment against President Trump. What power of persuasion or otherwise do you all in the Senate have when it comes to the House? Because the House Republicans are raising all of these same concerns, and Democrats are proceeding... As planned. Well, I think it's why Lindsay is really uh, leaning forward into forcing the issue of you, you should not go into a secured facility to discuss information that should be in an open hearing. And yet they've gone on what we call the skip. That's where we listen to classified briefings. What they're covering there is not the least bit classified. It's not confidential. It should be subject to the, uh, the, the light of day and for everybody, including the president's counsel and Republicans to see. We've got to push the process. I think the American people, if they really understand how this really is a kangaroo court to this point, they're picking and choosing what they want to spin out in the press. And it reminds me, Shannon, so much of what I saw with Brett Kavanaugh. Mm -hmm. They will take and, and they'll send the public, they'll send the media down these rabbit holes that produce no fruit. They tried to use that to discredit Brett Kavanaugh. And thank goodness I was able to vote for him on the Judiciary Committee and get him com uh, committed to this, or I should say confirmed to the Supreme Court. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for the games that I think Nancy Pelosi is playing. The two pieces of information we have today is the transcript and the whistleblower complaint. They know that doesn't rise to a level of impeachment. So why would you be afraid to actually present any other information but for the fact that you have none? And that's the position I take at, at this point in time. Well, there's been a lot of criticism that not a lot is getting done on the Hill other than this impeachment stuff. But you all have had a hearing now about sanctuary cities. I know it's something you're very passionate about. I want to cite some reporting from WBTV in Charlotte. North Carolina, where I used to work, mm -hmm. um, they went through ICE documents. They say, according to the new ICE data obtained by WBTV, nearly 500 undocumented immigrants across um, North Carolina who've been released, um, despite a federal detainer, include people charged with sex offenses, kidnapping, arson, and homicide. Uh, that doesn't line up with what we're told about the people who are being released. Well, that's we had a hearing today that I was able to preside over that was interesting. My, the bill that we heard today is a bill that I've, I'll be filing later this week, and I've got another bill shortly thereafter that just says this. If you want to have a sanctuary policy and you release somebody who has been charged with domestic violence, murder, rape, sexual assault, sexual assault of a minor, and you refuse to cooperate with ICE, and you release them into the community, and they create another victim, we believe that victim should have a right to sue whatever governmental entity allow that policy to go into place. What was interesting in the committee today, we got no pushback from the Democrats on the policy. They wanted to pivot to things that had nothing to do with what we want to do, and that is to provide victims' rights for dangerous sanctuary policies. And in North Carolina, we have a handful of our largest counties that are practicing in this, and they're contributors to about the 500 people that we mentioned in North Carolina. That means that thousands of people who have been convicted of serious violent crimes are on the streets today because local law enforcement is not cooperating with ICE so that they can do their job and keep communities safer. All right. Well, um, there's a lot of heat on both sides of that conversation. We'll watch for your bill next week and whatever debate comes from that as well. I think it'll be it. I think we're going to get to a good outcome. Thank you. Senator, thank you for coming in. Thank you.